I have this dice. It's a musical dice with all 12 notes on it. It's um, a dodecahedron. All right, here we go. F sharp. All right, next one. A flat. So there's a simple trick to be able to figure the notes out of any major scale. And I'll just get right to it. It has to do with the major scale structure, which is the sequence of whole steps and half steps. See, a major scale has eight notes. Going from one note to the next, it goes whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. So you could run that pattern from any of the notes and figure out a major scale. Okay, if that's the trick, why are there 12 minutes left in this video? That's because there's something much more important than just the sequence of whole steps and half steps in a major scale. And it comes down to the numbers numbering each note in the scale as you go up, which are called scale degrees. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now there's only seven numbers because number eight is actually the same note as number one. These numbers are critical to music theory. This is how musicians think about the notes in chords or how chords relate to each other, as in chord progressions, or how melody notes or any note relate to the key or chord that you're in. So in this video, I'm actually gonna share with you how you can learn all 12 major scales relatively quickly. That way you can start to understand chords and chord progressions much better. Okay, it's mildly frustrating not hearing eight. There we go, much better. Now there are a lot of reasons pianists learn to play the major scales. A lot of times they wanna improve their technique to play faster and more evenly, or maybe they wanna just learn all the key signatures so they know what key they're playing in. Now my goal here is to teach you major scales so that you can understand music theory. So I'm only gonna show you one octave, but I will show you how to play both hands with the proper fingering if you wanna work on your technique and play them more octaves. If you only care about music theory and learning chords and chord progressions, you could just learn one hand and it is much easier. The important thing here is to learn the notes and the keys so that you can recognize it visually and not just by sound. I've also made a PDF major scale helper sheet that I use with all my students. It has all the notes and fingerings as well as the fingering rules, which I'll be going over in a minute. It can be a helpful guide so you don't have to keep track of everything I say here. It's all in the helper sheet. If you wanna grab it, I'll put a link in the description below. Now, before we dive into the scales, I wanna briefly talk about the circle of fifths. At some point, I'm gonna do a full deep dive video into the circle of fifths, but for now, you should just know a few things because the circle of fifths is the order that is nice to learn the scales. The circle of fifths is just a way to organize all 12 notes so that each note is five notes apart from each other. Now the reason this is interesting is because as you go from one note to the another note and build a scale on each, each scale is only one note different than the scales next to it. For example, the key of C is all white notes, and when you go one notch on the circle to the key of G, it has one sharp, F sharp, and all the other notes are the same. And then as you go around the circle, each scale adds a sharp until you get down to the bottom, F sharp, which has six sharps. Likewise, if you go the other way around the circle, each scale will add one flat until you get all the way to the bottom, and if you call F sharp G flat, that has six flats. Now I like to divide the scales into three groups. Going around the circle, the first five scales all have the same fingering as the key of C, so that group is called the C scale fingering group. Then when you get to the bottom of the circle, these scales have all the black notes, and there's three rules to govern the fingering called the 3-2-1 rules, so that group is called the 3-2-1 group. Then we have the remaining flat scales, which have their own flat scale fingering rules, so that group is called the flat scale group. All right, let's take it to the piano and start learning these scales. Let's start with the basic C major scale. The fingering for this scale, and really all five scales in this group, is one, two, three, then your thumb goes under, and it's one, two, three, four, five. Going back down, it's just the opposite. Cross your middle finger over. Now, if you wanna play both hands, you have to get used to finger combinations, which is your thumb and pinky, one and five, two and four, and your middle fingers at the same time, then your right hand thumb goes under, and these are called one, two combos, because you're playing your thumb and pointer finger, and then your other pointer and finger and thumb. Then you have your middle fingers, and you're up at the top. If you do want to think about technique a little bit, the goal is to have even rhythm, no pauses. As we move on to the G scale, it's going to have the same fingering. It just starts on G, and then when we get to the seventh note, F, 
is gonna be F sharp. Now this is important that the new sharp is on the seventh note of the scale. That's because every scale as we go around the circle fifths, the seventh note will get raised up one note and that'll be always the new sharp. We also collect sharps. As we go around the circle all the way down to F sharp, we're gonna keep the sharps as we go. So this F sharp will be in all six scales. We also collect scale degrees. So the seventh note is gonna be in sharp in all these next six scales. Very mildly interesting patterns here. So here's the G scale. Next onto the D scale, we keep that F sharp and it will now be the third note of the scale. And the seventh scale degree will be the new sharp, which is C sharp. Onto the key of A, we keep both those sharps. C sharp is the third note, the F sharp is the sixth scale degree, and the seventh scale degree is the new sharp. And the final scale in the C scale fingering group is E. And we keep all three sharps from the A scale, F sharp, G sharp, and C sharp, and we add the seventh note, which is D sharp. I like this scale because it starts on a white note, and then you got two black notes, two white notes, two black notes, and a white note. On to the next group, which is the three, two, one rule group. Before I explain the rules, let's just learn the B scale, because it's not that much different. So this scale has five sharps, which is all five black notes. And the B scale right hand is actually the same fingering as the C scale. One, two, three, one, two, three, four, five. But the left hand is where it's different. Instead of starting on your pinky, you have to remember to start on your fourth finger. And the fingering is four, three, two, one, four, three, two, one. 4, 3, 2, 1. Now, let's explain the rules. Well, the three rule has to do with the group of three black notes, and you use these three fingers, fingers two, three, and four. Now the two rule has to do with the two black notes, and you use these two fingers. It's like a peace sign, or scissors in rock, paper, scissors, two and three on the two black notes. And then the one rule has to do with the one white note in the middle of the scale is your first finger, your thumbs. The note B is the only exception to this rule. Start on B, then you have the two rule, then you have your thumbs on E, then you have the three rule. On to the F sharp scale, we have six sharps now, and we start by using the three rule with our three fingers on the three black notes. Then you bring your thumbs to B, and then the two rule, and now our E is actually E sharp. It's not a black note, it goes up to F, essentially, with both your thumbs. And then it doesn't really matter what finger plays this F sharp unless you play multiple octaves and you gotta do a three rule. Now the next scale is where we flip to flats. If we called D flat C sharp, this scale would have seven sharps. Every note would be sharp. In the key of D flat, we only have five flats, so it's slightly easier to think about. We start on a two rule, then we do the higher white note F, three rule, and the higher white note C. So once you understand the three, two, one rules, the main thing to remember is the white notes. You can either do the lower white note or the higher white note. And we go from low to high. So the B scale has the lower white notes, F sharp, the first note is low and the second note is high, and D flat, both white notes are high. Onto the flat scales, we've actually already kind of played a flat, D flat, but that one still follows the three, two, one rules. But I want to point out, all four flats, the left hand has the same fingering, three, two, one, Four, three, two, one. The f number one flat scale is number one because it's the most important thing at first. It's that your left hand plays the, your fourth finger on the fourth note for every flat scale, except for F. That doesn't automatically happen necessarily, so you actually really have to think of that until it becomes automatic. Now also as we go around, we're actually taking away a flat each scale. The black note on the seventh note, it will get raised up to the white note above it. Starting on the A flat scale, the seventh note is raised up to a white note. Let's talk about rule number three. It's that you start the three flat scales with your third fingers. That's why it's rule three. And you're both your thumbs on C, and here's that fourth finger, which notice it's not a two rule. That's why you have to really remember it. And then, here's rule number four. A group of two white notes is gonna be one-two combos. These one-two combos are actually the same exact fingers you did on these two notes in a C scale.
onto the E flat scale, we're only gonna have three flats. This is like the inverse of the E scale. We're gonna have a black note, then two white notes, two black notes, two white notes, and then E flat on top. There's two groups of two white notes, and both of those are gonna be one, two combos. And this is also the time to talk about rule number two, which is that your right hand fourth finger is on B flat, which when you're going down the scale, it's a group of two white notes, but you have to remember to use your fourth finger. I'll just say, as a fingering best practice in general, any scale that has a B flat, your right hand plays your fourth finger on B flat. Now on to B flat, we only have two flats, which is the first and fourth scale degree. So we start and we enter a group of two white notes, one, two combos. Here's the fourth finger. And now we have a group of three white notes. And we actually use these three fingers, one and three, two and two, three and one. There's the B flat on top. The middle note is not B flat, so it's your third finger. And then one, two combos. Onto the F scale, which is the final scale we'll learn. The left hand goes back to a C scale fingering. Five, four, three, two, one, three, two, one. The right hand, the most important thing is to follow the number two flat scale because the right hand is one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And as you're descending, you have to remember to use your fourth finger on the B flat so that you end on your thumb. That's all 12 scales. Now let me give you a few tips if you wanna learn these major scales. The first one is that you wanna to try to play the scale correctly right from the beginning. Take your time, double check the fingering. What you don't wanna do is just attempt over and over. All these mistakes just build up these bad habits of playing it the wrong way. You wanna take your time and really double check and think of the correct way. Now I like the approach where you test yourself. Can you play it correctly the first time you play it? And if you do, great. And if you make a mistake, well then figure it out and play it correctly a few times in a row Then test yourself the next day. The other thing I see people do a lot is not really thinking about the notes in the scale. They're just doing it by sound. You're going up the notes and you kind of like, oh, I, I think it's, I hear this note next. And then I hear another note. Oh, oh no, it wasn't that. It was this. Okay. And then I hear this. That's what I call sound guessing. If you play a wrong note, you're like, oh, that wasn't the right one, and you try to find the correct one. This is not what we wanna do here. You wanna learn to visualize the notes, the patterns of white and black notes and where they lie. And of course, scale degrees. For example, the A flat scale has flats on scale degrees one, two, four, and five. E scale has sharps on scale degrees two, three, six, and seven. This is valuable information to know when you're learning music theory. So please let me know in the comments if that helps you learn your major scales. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask.